I just want to touch on a few more things. Uh, I talked about how to uh, feed your filler rod, how you set it on your middle finger, in between your pointer finger and your thumb, and then you basically just kind of do like this, and that's how you feed the filler wire uh, as you're dipping it in. So basically, when you have your, your welding machine here and you're leaning up against, and you're going to fill in there with the wire, you're holding this nice and steady real close. Obviously, like I've said before, you don't want to dip your tungsten. So you're down in here like this, and you're real close with your face watching that. Obviously, my thumb would be on this uh, control right here, and I'd be controlling this amperage with my thumb as I'm moving along here, and you go in and you dip, and you move, and you dip, and you move, and you dip, and you move. You're moving very slowly. You can see by looking at the weld pattern that I have there that it's, it's a little dip and we make a little wave. And then you dip it, you let the metal heat up. And you dip it, you let the metal heat up. You dip it, you let the metal heat up. You dip it, you just keep on going like that. Uh, most of your aluminum welding is done by freehand. And what I was doing there was freehanding. That was like this. Now, things you can do also is you can take this big heavy cable which is this is the uh, 300 amp torch so it's got a big hose here because it has a power cable that goes up to it it has a supply and a supply and a return of coolant and then it has this uh, tan grayish colored cord here which is actually the uh, for setting the amperage on the torch um, Other things I wanted to touch base on was uh, burning out porosity. I had mentioned the other day about grease, uh, like a casing from a motorcycle or something. A piece of aluminum, specifically cast, which is more porous than forged aluminum, gets grease inside of it and it basically can't get it out. So what you have to do at that point in time is burn that grease out. You clean it as good as you possibly can, and then you get on it with the torch. You don't add any filler wire, and you, you just burn and burn and burn and sit right there. And what's going to happen is it's going to boil up and be full of porosity. And then when it gets to the point that that's what it's doing and it's not going to, you can tell it's not going to take any metal, then you've got to back out of it. You've got to go in and grind it out clean it back up and go back in again. You may have to do that three, four times before you'll actually get it to take. And you've got to be real careful on the edges. The center will take because all of the grease is uh, burned out of the center section. But when you get out to those outside edges, you've got to just barely touch on those outside edges so that it doesn't, uh, you don't start another big porosity puddle, which is what you want to stay away from. So it's almost impossible, something that's been impregnated with grease a lot, to get it perfect, but you can usually get it pretty good, uh, good enough that you can run it on a bike and you're never going to have a problem with it. It's not going to leak. Uh, so I've done repairs on those. It works pretty good. Um, now we talked about uh, doing it the other way with uh, uh, just basically balancing and moving along. Then you got, as I spoke the other day, walking the cup, which you can do several different ways. Walking the cup would be this, when you can do it like this. And moving along like that. There's also other ways to hold uh, the cup. You can hold it upside down like this and basically do the same thing. Just remember this big hose that's on here has to be someplace, so that's more difficult with the heavier torches that have the uh, coolant fed torches. Uh, there's a lot more uh, weight there, so you can hang that around your neck. That makes a, a big difference for some of that weight. Um, there's also different filler wires. 54, 56 is one that comes to mind, uh, which is an aluminum filler wire. Different filler wires work with different types of aluminum. Um, They'll all work, just has to do with different uh, alloys that are in them. Um, there are a lot of new metals, uh, pot metals and scrap metals that they're using out there these days that aren't very good. Uh, you can't even weld to them. Uh, I, I've had it where I've had a quarter size hole in a transfer case 
from a vehicle and tried to weld a piece of aluminum into that quarter size hole and basically the weld looked perfect but you could take a piece of wire and pop it right off of there it didn't even take to it so they're mixing a lot of stuff up out there that uh, is not even repairable anymore it's just, just pouring a bunch of stuff together and you get what you get um, so some of that stuff isn't repairable then you've got uh, white metals which is another one you got to be real gentle and careful with that you can weld some of that some of it you can't um, and you've got cast versus uh, forged type aluminum uh, forged is always the best I mean it's pressure put together it's clean it's really good there's not a lot of porosity in it um, it welds really awesome uh, when you get to cast some of it depending upon what it is you can weld some of it just keeps cracking uh, so there's a lot of situations out there that no matter what you do or how good you are you're not going to be able to repair it sometimes that's just the way that it is um, then I spoke of the welding machines the sinker wave machines which was a, was a Miller machine um, and the new Miller square wave which is the uh, the new dynasties and that's a square wave and uh, that's the machine that I have and uh, square wave is the best technology uh, where the old synchro waves what they used high frequency and it was continuous high frequency so you needed besides having the welding machine you needed a high frequency setup and it ran continuous high frequency the new square wave only has high frequency on the start and then it utilizes the square wave after that the machine is an inverter type machine so it's much smaller the old ones that had transformers in them the synchro waves they weighed about a thousand pounds and uh, were about three feet by two feet by two feet the new ones the dynasties the inverter machines weigh 60 pounds they're about 18 inches long about eight inches wide and about 12 inches high uh, they're much easier to move around you can weld just about anything with them uh, the other thing is when you're when you're welding and you're holding on to your torch the last thing you want to do is grip it tight and put that death grip on if you put that death grip on you're never going to be able to walk the cup because you'll slide across the material you got to be gentle and just hold on to a real gentle in your hand and just be real careful you only really got to hold on to it with a couple fingers that's all it really takes <laughs>